Hey guys, my name is Jasmine and today we're going to be playing with colors. Before we get started, I'm going to tell you what you need. You need at least one piece of paper. If you want to do this multiple times, you can grab more paper. Colored pencils, crayons, a sharpie, any kind of sharpie. I have two different types here. One is better than the other. I have um, a drawing pencil, which is also a graphite pencil, as well as an eraser. So what I mean by we're going to be playing with colors is that we're going to be playing with things that are one color and things that are also complementary color. So with one color, that's called monochromatic, and it's basically like grayscale. So if you see a black and white photo, that's monochromatic. It has a single color, and it kind of plays between different um, shades and tones and values. So we're going to be doing that with actual color. So like say if I take blue, I could have like a light blue and dark blue and like a medium blue kind of all together that is monochromatic. With complementary colors, that is, if you look at a color wheel, which I have one here, it's the colors that are across from one another. So like yellow and purple are complementary colors, blue and orange are complementary colors, and green and red are complementary colors. So I'm going to be using both the front of my paper and the back of my paper for this so that I have two artworks on one piece of paper. It covers both the front and the back. And I'm going to start out with my monochrome sort of layout in my artwork. So just like what I mentioned in my example, I'm going to be using blue for this. I'm going to use both my color pencil and my um, crayon blues. They're slightly different blues, but you'll get the point. So there's my blue. There's my other blue. I'm going to tear down the paper on this so that I can use a little bit more of it. And we're basically going to be making lines and shapes and seeing how our tones and um, different values kind of interact with one another. One way that we are going to make our monochromatic piece here is going to be dealing with saturation. I kind of mentioned it before with using lighter blues and darker blues. If that is called saturation, if a blue is more blue, you might think it's more blue, that is more saturated because it looks more bold. So like for instance, let's get started and take my blue. And I'm gonna make random lines with this. You can make random lines and shapes. It's all about kind of getting to know your material and how you can use it. So with my crayon here, I'm going kind of light, making random loops. I'm covering my whole paper because that is very important to me that I cover my whole paper. And this is one type of blue. This is a lighter blue, so it's not too saturated. But if I go in, and I press a little bit harder. This is a more saturated blue. You can see it a little bit better than the other blue, my lighter blue. And then for my last blue, I'm gonna color as dark as I can color. And that is my dark blue. So now, with my color pencil, I'm going to go in, I'm going to fill random shapes that I think I need to be filled, these random loops that formed from me drawing with my crayon. And you can do this same thing with your crayon, instead of switching um, to a color pencil or vice versa, if you start with a color pencil, you can continue using your color pencil. But I decided to switch because depending on what you use, you can kind of see how differently it feels, how differently it looks when you press down harder and things are more saturated. Like these two shapes here, this one is less saturated than this one. This one's more bold looking. You can see it a little bit better. Then we have this one here, which is very saturated. And then pressing down harder. You can see it better, but it's all blue. It's still all monochromatic. You can also do gradients. Gradients are always fun, which would be coloring darker on one side and lighter on the other side. Something like this. Pressing down harder, 
and then not pressing down as hard so it's more saturated on one side and you can color this however you want to color it just have to use one color so like this is all blue you can do whatever color you want though You can do this as many times as you want. You can use different kind of lines. You can use straight lines that are just kind of overlapping. You don't have to use looped lines like I did. You can do whatever kind of lines you want. And then I'm gonna flip over my paper to show you what I mean by complementary colors. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing, but I'm going to pick my complementary color pairs. Like I mentioned before, if you look at a color wheel, they are the colors that are directly across from one another. So how like yellow and purple are across from one another, those are complementary colors. And then there is red and green, which are complementary colors, and orange and blue are complementary colors. So I am going to use yellow and purple for my complementary colors. Grab those in both my crayons and my colored pencils. There is my yellow. And here is my purple. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm not going to use the lines still for this one because I want it to be a little bit different. So, and you can continue to play with saturation and see how. Um, your colors interact with one another even though it might be the same color so like how your purple may act different from a lighter purple um and when you're working with complementary colors another thing to kind of notice is how well they contrast and contrast is just how drastically they look different and complementary colors are a good contrast so go in kind of wavy lines for this one Notice how I'm also making my lines connect. You don't have to let your lines connect, but that is how I'm going to do mine here. For the most part, did some loops. I'm going to go in with my yellow. Once again, yellow and purple are complementary colors. I know I said I wasn't going to do loops, but then I still do loops. It's kind of automatic for me, I guess. And then, if you want, instead of doing just lines, you can do um, shapes and forms. So, like, you can do triangles, little squiggly shapes, squares, rectangles, whatever shapes you want to use. I might jump in with other shapes later. But it's also fun to see how just solo lines kind of act. Notice how this yellow is a little bit different from my other yellow, but it's still yellow, so they are still complementary colors. And also notice your um, your empty spaces. Like for mine here, I can kind of see that I have kind of a weird, well, it's weird to me, it may not be weird to you, but a white border that you can fill in with um, your Sharpie color pencil, um, like solid color, maybe just a regular pencil, maybe a graphite pencil. It depends on what you see and what you kind of want to do. So for me, let's see. And also think about how your piece looks differently. You can rotate your paper whenever you're doing a piece like this, any kind of abstract piece that's not like, you know, a tree where it might have one set point. You can flip your paper and see how different it looks from different, um, different ways. So like I started mine like this. I kind of like it this way instead. But for my white border here, I'm just going to do random circles and picking my Sharpie. You can use whatever you want to use in your spaces that look kind of empty. Just doing random circles. Draw a few more in between. You can do this with your drawing pencil, your graphite pencil whatever you want to use. 
And I'm going to go back in to those circles and I'm going to color them with my complementary colors. If you also want to kind of twist it up a little bit, you can grab another pair of complementary colors. You can use um, orange and blue for filling in your random shapes. Whatever you want to do. But you can see how your complementary colors are contrasting with one another and how different they are and how cool they look next to one another. Have a little pattern happening with my colors. I also think that black and white, so the white of our paper and the black of our Sharpie provides a really good contrast. You can see how differently they look. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm just gonna add black dots. And there we go. There is our complimentary colored artwork. So once again, we talked about monochromatic, which is this side here. You can see the Sharpie through it, but that's fine. Um, this side is monochromatic. It is one single color. It's one hue of blue, and you can see how they interact with another. There is a darker blue, which is more saturated, so it looks more blue, versus our blue that is lighter. It looks kind of more, I don't know, feathery, if that's a good word. And we also talked about complementary colors, which are, if we look at your color wheel, it is yellow and purple, orange and blue, and green and red. They are colors on the color wheel that are across from one another. So they provide a good contrast. They look very different. And just like how I just mentioned with the um, Sharpie and the paper, white and black are good examples of contrast. But you guys can do this with different kind of line works, different kind of shapes. You can see how everything interacts with both monochromatic and with complementary colors. And I hope you guys do just that and make tons more, really experiment and see how you can make everything look different. And I hope you guys do just that and I will see you guys next time. Bye.